so you've installed some self-hosted runners to use with your workflows. How do you actually make your workflow execute on those runners? That is where the magic of labels comes into play. Let's look at how you can use labels to target which self-hosted runners will execute your workflows. Hey y'all, I'm Mickey Gousset, and today we are looking at how to use labels on your self-hosted runners to target those runners with workflows. Now self-hosted runners can have multiple labels, and in fact, by default, all runners have three labels. Self-hosted, the OS version, like Linux or Windows, and the architecture version, like x64. In addition to those labels, you can add other labels to the runners to help identify them, such as maybe a group name or runner-specific functionality, such as this runner contains GPU processors. To target a workflow at a particular runner or a set of runners, you use the runs on command, and then you list one or more labels. The more labels you list, the more targeted your workflow will be. Now, Let's look at how we can create and use labels on a self-hosted runner. Remember, when we installed the self-hosted runner, we also applied labels to that runner. And labels are what we use to be able to target a runner to ensure that we're using a specific runner or a specific set of runners. You don't use the runner group name, you use the label that's assigned to the runner. So if we go back and look at our runner, so at the organizational level, we'll go to settings, because that's where we installed it, and we select runners. In this case, you can see I've got one runner, it's currently idle. It's in the default group, and it has the following labels applied to it. If I click the runner name, I can see the details about the runner. It shows me the configuration. I could change the runner group. If I had multiple groups, I could move to a different runner to a different group. I could see if there were any active jobs running on that runner right now. And I can add more labels to that runner. So for example, I could say, you know what, for this runner, I'm going to add a label that I created earlier called label three. And if I refresh, you can see that runner now has label three on it. So I could target it using label three. So if we come back out and let's go back to our repo and we'll go to actions and we'll start the workflow. Then we should be able to see it pick up, which it did. And if we come over to this page, and we can see that currently there's a job named build that is running from that repository. I could cancel it from here if I wanted to, or I can even click here and it will take me to the run. And of course it completed successfully. So if we go back to where we were, then it's going to show that there are currently no more active jobs. So that's how you can add more labels to the runner. It's very simple. You just come in here and add them um, directly using the, 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 the settings wheel. Now, you may be wondering, well, can I add them back over here? Well, if we stop the runner and we do a config.sh-help, then you know, there is a, a way that when you run the config.sh, you could pass all these values in as you're initially setting up, and there is a dash dash labels. So what happens if I say dot slash config.sh dash dash labels label four? You can see I can't run the configure again because it's already configured. To reconfigure the runner, I've got to remove 
the current configuration and basically reinstall it. And I don't want to do that. So therefore, um, I need to do this through the GUI. I'm betting I could probably do it through the API, but I have not checked that. But there you go. That's getting you started with labels. I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to use labels to target self-hosted runners. If so, please comment and like this video, subscribe to my channel, and smash that bell to be notified of my next video. Thanks for watching.